Monster Hunter World Iceborne is a wonderful gaming experience, with a whole host of content that Capcom has supported over the past few years. But now we have access to all the game has to offer, and we can now work towards the best of the best builds possible. So I'm Dabre with the best of the best builds for the bow in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now when I say best of the best build, I mean a build that is constructed from some of the rarest armor, weaponry and jewels in the game. This gives hunters some of the strongest sets possible. For this series I'll be featuring 4 builds for the various weapons, which should cater to a variety of playstyles. When it comes to the bow, it's a very fast weapon. Utilising fast ranged DPS combined with smooth mobility, you're able to rain down damage on monsters from afar so long as you're managing your stamina. The bow does have a downside though of being a dual heavy weapon, meaning that you need a lot of jewels to make it work. Nonetheless, if you utilise gear with a lot of jewel sockets, you can create some of the most powerful DPS builds in the game. So the first build is the best of the best raw attack bow build. Now when it comes to the bow, it's not the best weapon when it comes to raw attack. However, utilising certain bits of gear, along with the bow of vice and violence, which is the fatalis bow, you can create a very strong raw attack build that can be taken against any monster. Whilst yes, elemental builds may still be able to out DPS this one, this bow build can be used against pretty much any monster, regardless of their resistances. So, for this build you'll need the Tentacle Cow Gamma, the Dragon Hide Alpha, the Dragon Claws Beta, Dragon Barbs Alpha, and the Dragon Feet Beta. I'm also using a Critical Charm 3, and for my weapon I'm using the Bow of Vice and Violence like I mentioned. This is the Fatalis Bow, which has a Health Regen Augmentation, and then an Attack Increase Augmentation. As for the Specialist Tools, these are down to personal preference, but I've gone for a Temporal and Rocksteady Mantle. So next up, when it comes to the jewels, you've got a lot to play around with. First of all, I've gone for expert jewels for some critical eye. I've then gone for force shot jewels for the normal shot skill, mighty bow jewel for the bow charge plus skill, a spread jewel for the power shot skill, attack jewels for the attack boost skill, a shaver jewel for the clutch crawl boost skill, challenger jewels for the agitator skill, physique jewels for the constitution, and evasion jewels for the evade window skill. As for the jewels on our mantles, I've again I've gone for attack jewels for some points in the attack boost skill. So, if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 200 health and 200 stamina, regardless of if you've taken all your relevant consumables. You have a raw attack of 482 with 15% base affinity. This 15% affinity can be potentially 85% if you take into account weakness exploit as well as the buff from the agitator skill. You have a dragon rating of 120. This is very low but it's not really needed on this build. Of course if the monster you're going against is weak to the dragon element this will add a little bit of extra damage but it's not essential. You also have high elder seal with all of the coatings by the blast coating and you have a strong defense of 1117 that is strong against water and thunder, neutral against ice, but unfortunately weak to fire and dragon. Now when it comes to the skills, you have quite a few of them. First of all is Critical Eye at level 7. This is a skill that increases the base affinity of a build. Critical Eye is also recommended as it will nullify the negative affinity found on the Bow of Vice and Violence. You have Agitator at level 7, which is a buff that kicks in whenever a monster becomes enraged. When this happens, you'll gain increased raw attack and increased base affinity. And as you can easily control when a monster becomes enraged in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, thanks to the whole flint shot mechanic, the Agitator buff should be active for the majority of a hunt. You also have Evade Window at level 5, which is a skill that increases the invincibility and invulnerability frames when we perform dodges and such. This also applies to the bow's natural evades that you can perform mid-combo, adding to our overall survivability. You have Attack Boost at level 4, which can potentially be level 6 when you're wearing your mantles. Attack Boost is a skill that increases the raw attack of a build, and at level 4 or above, it also provides us a bonus 5% affinity. You have Critical Boost at level 3, which is a skill that increases our damage whenever our shots crit a monster. However, this increased damage is only applied to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental portion. But, as this build is all about raw attack, then we greatly benefit from Crit Boost. Next up is Weakness Exploit at level 3. This is a skill that increases our affinity whenever we're attacking monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through Clutch Claw attacks first, this increase to our affinity is even greater. Weakness Exploit at level 3 can potentially provide us an extra bonus 50% affinity. Next up is Constitution at level 3. Constitution is kind of an essential skill for the bow as it reduces the stamina cost of performing shots, evades and such. However, you only really have to go to level 3 with Constitution, as this can be topped up through other means such as Dash Juice. Next up is Stamina Surge at level 3, which is a skill that increases how quickly our stamina will recharge itself. 
Next up is Normal Shots at level 2. Normal Shots is a skill that increases the damage of shots performed with R2 or RT. Basically the normal arrow shots. It doesn't apply to coatings. However, this increase in damage is only applied to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental portion. You have power shots at level 2 as well, which again is similar to normal shots. However, it applies to power shots performed with the bow. So shots performed with the circle button or the B button. It doesn't apply to power coatings. You also have Tool Specialist level 1, which is a kind of byproduct of the gear we're wearing. Tool Specialist is a skill that reduces the cooldown on our specialist tools slightly. You have Bow Charge plus level 1, which increases the amount of times we can actually charge up the bow, which ultimately leads to more DPS and damage. And finally, you'll have Clutch Claw Boost level 1, which is a skill that allows our Clutch Claw attack to tenderize a monster body part in just one Clutch Claw attack instead of two. Now when it comes to the set bonus, you will have two of them, both related to the Fatalis Legend set bonus. For wearing two pieces of the armor, you'll have the Inheritance set bonus. This is a skill that increases the level cap on certain skills. When it comes to this build, it's really only applied to one skill, which is the Agitator skill, allowing us to get from level 5 to a maximum of level 7. But more importantly for the bow, for wearing four pieces of the armor, you'll have the Transcendence set bonus. This is a skill that grants us 200 health and 200 stamina, regardless of if we've taken consumables. That 200 stamina will mean that we can continue our assault for longer periods before we have to back off and recharge our stamina. But on top of that, it also will provide us the true spare shot skill, which gives us a greater chance at not consuming a coating when we fire an arrow. So there we have it, that's the best of the best raw attack build for the bow. This is obviously a strong build that can be taken against pretty much any monster in the game. And whilst elemental builds may be able to bring certain monsters down more easily, this is a nice universal build that can be used against anything. But even the best of the best builds have pros and cons. When it comes to this build, its biggest pro is its raw damage output. Combining attack boost, agitator, critical eye, crit boost, weakness exploit and more, it means that our shots are going to be hitting monsters quite hard. On top of that, this build has quite a few quality of life skills. From Constitution, Stamina Surge to Evade Window, it means that our stamina management isn't going to be too much of an issue and adds some defense when it comes to evading monster attacks. And finally for the pros is the Fatalis Legend set bonuses, providing us the Inheritance and Transcendence bonuses which add DPS, quality of life and defense to a build. But unfortunately there are cons. One of the biggest cons, which is more of a con for the bow in general, is unfortunately you have a limited supply of coatings. This is slightly alleviated thanks to the transcendent set bonus, but nonetheless there's going to be times where you run out of the various coatings you can use. And on top of that, the other con is unfortunately this is a very jewel heavy build, requiring some of the rarest jewels in the game for this build to work. But nonetheless, if you're able to get your hand on the jewels, have access to the Fatalis gear and weaponry, you can create one of the most powerful builds in the game for the bow that you can use against pretty much any monster in the game quite effectively and efficiently. Which brings us on to the next build, which is the best of the best elemental bow build. This is a strong elemental DPS build, making use of the various elements in the game, which allows you to bring down monsters quickly and efficiently, especially with the bow, thanks to the fast attacks it can perform. But you have to take into account a monster's elemental weaknesses for this build to be efficient. So, for this you'll need the Safi Crested Crown Beta, the Safi Crested Chest Alpha, the Safi Crested Van Braces Beta, Safi Crested Belt Beta, and the Safi Crested Boots Beta. I'm also using a Frost Charm 5, which can be potentially a different charm of a different element if you're using a different weapon that has a said different element. And for my weapon I'm using the Kiar Bow Stream. This has an Elemental Up augmentation and a Health Regen augmentation. As for the specialist tools, again these are done to personal preference but I've gone for a glider and evasion mantle. Anyway moving on to the jewels you've got a fair few to play around with. So first of all I've gone for a spread jewel to put a point in the power shot skill. I've then gone for vitality jewels for the health boost skill, a shaver jewel for the clutch claw boost skill, evasion jewels for the evade window skill, tenderizer jewels to max out weakness exploit, physique jewels for some points in the constitution skill, four shot jewel for the normal shot skill, a mighty bow jewel for the bow charge plus skill and finally a frost jewel to max out the ice attack skill. Of course, like I said at the start, if you're using a weapon that has a different element, you'd replace the frost jewel to match whatever new element you were using. As for the jewels on our mantles, I've gone for force shot and spread jewels to max out the normal shot skill as well as the power shot skill. And for the jewels on the evasion mantle, I've gone for a physique jewel and a mind's eye jewel. 
which will put another point in the constitution skill and give us the ballistic skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina. When you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables, you have a raw attack of 306 with 50% base affinity. However, this affinity stat is taken with the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff in effect. This affinity can easily be 100% as well when you're taking into account weakness exploit. You have an Ice Elemental rating of 950. Again, this stat is taken with the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff in effect and you'll have close range power, poison and sleep coatings. You'll also have a decent defense of 1081 that is strong against every single element except for the dragon element. So when it comes to the skills, you've got quite a few of them. First of all is Ice Attack at level six. This is a skill that increases the ice rating and thus the ice damage of this build. Of course, if you were using a different weapon with a different element, Ice Attack would be replaced to whatever new element you were using. You have Evade Window at level five, Health Boost at level three, Health boost is a skill that allows our health to get to that maximum of 200. You have Blight Resistance level 3, which is built into the armor we're wearing. Blight Resistance is a skill that nullifies all elemental blights against our hunter. You have Critical Boost level 3. A reminder though, with Critical Boost, it does not apply to the elemental damage. It only applies to the raw damage when our attacks crit a monster. You have Weakness Exploit at level 3. You have Constitution at level 2, which can be potentially level 3 when we're wearing the Evasion Mantle. It's a shame we couldn't get this higher, but unfortunately we were limited on jewels we could use. You have Normal Shots at level 1, which can be potentially level 2 when we're wearing the Glider Mantle. You have Power Shots at level 1, which again can be potentially level 2 when we're wearing the Glider Mantle. You have Bow Charge Plus. You have Critical Element, which is built into the Kiar weapons. This is a skill that works similar to Critical Boost. However, it applies to the elemental portion of an attack. So when our shots crit a monster, which they should be for the majority of a hunt, thanks to having potentially 100% affinity, it means that the elemental damage of our shots will be increased. You also have Clutch Claw Boost at level one. And finally, when you're wearing the Evasion Mantle, you'll have the Ballistic skill. Ballistics is a skill which is great for when you're combining it with power coatings. Basically, power coatings if you're at point blank range, they won't do the most amount of damage they can deal. With ballistics, it kind of eliminates this, which means that try to always use the evasion mantle so you get the ballistic skill whilst you have power coatings available. And then finally for the set bonus, you have the Safi Jeeva Seal, which provides us the true Dragon Vein Awakening. This is a skill that increases our base affinity by 40%, as well as our elemental damage for simply having our weapon drawn. However, there is a downside to this because with every shot, regardless of if we hit a monster or not, it will drain a portion of our health, leaving a small amount of red health on our health bar. This can quickly build up, especially if we're missing with our shots, which can leave us at risk. However, should we be accurate and our shots continuously hit a monster for a certain amount of time, then the true Dragon Vein Awakening will initiate a heal, healing us for the health it drained. So there we have it, that is the elemental build I tend to use for the bow in Monster Hunter. But even this has pros and cons. Its biggest pro is its elemental damage output. Having a maxed out elemental attack combined with high affinity and the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff, it means we're able to take down monsters quite quickly so long as we're taking into account their elemental weaknesses. On top of that, this build has quite a few defensive skills thanks to having evade window, health boost, blight resistance. This all adds to your survivability. And the final pro is the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff itself, providing you a ton of DPS bonuses for simply having your weapon drawn. But unfortunately, there are cons to every build. The biggest con for this build is the true Dragon Vein Awakening health drain, which I mentioned, which can potentially leave you at risk. This is alleviated slightly thanks to the health regen augmentation, but it's something to be aware of. And the other con for this build is, unfortunately, this build is kind of lacking when it comes to stamina management skills. It doesn't have constitution at level three, and unfortunately we weren't able to put stamina surge into this build, which means that this build needs dash juice in order to work efficiently. But despite the cons, this is still an excellent build to use against monsters, especially when you want to utilize elemental builds. The bow is one of the strongest elemental weapons in the game, so it can make use of them quite effectively and efficiently. So long as you're taking into account the elemental weaknesses of a monster, you should be able to bring them down very quickly with this build. Which brings us on to our third build, which is a niche or quirky build, normally sometimes called a meme build, which for the bow is the best of the best Dragon Piercer build. This build is a build that makes use of the Dragon Piercer move as our main attack. This is going to be combined with the Frostcraft set bonus, which means that we're always going to be sheathing our weapon and then immediately going into the Dragon Piercer move over and over again for the duration of a hunt. This allows for massive amounts of burst damage 
but it won't work that well against small monsters as it's most effective against monsters that have lots of hit zones on them. So for this build you'll need the Rhymeguard Helm Gamma, the Rhymeguard Nail Gamma, the Frostfang Vambraces Beta, the Rhymeguard Coil Gamma, the Rhymeguard Greaves Gamma and the Challenger Charm 5. And again for my weapon I'm using the Bow of Vice and Violence which has a health regen augmentation and an attack increase augmentation. As for the specialist tools, again they're down to personal preference, so I've gone for the Temporal and Rocksteady Mantle. So when it comes to the jewels, you've got a fair few to play around with. So I've gone for attack jewels for the attack boost skill, pierce jewels for the piercing shot skill, expert jewels for some critical eye, vitality jewels for the health boost skill, critical jewels for the crit boost skill, true shot jewel for the special ammo boost skill, shaver jewel for the clutch claw boost, and a mighty bow jewel for the bow charge plus skill. As for the jewels on the mantles, I've gone for expert jewels for some more critical eye and protection jewels for the divine blessing skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina. When you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables, you'll have a raw attack of 493 with minus 10% affinity. Although the affinity on this build doesn't matter too much, you'll pretty much have 100% when you take into account critical draw and the agitator buff being in effect which the way we're playing this build is how we're going to be utilizing our attacks most of the time. You have a dragon rating of 120 with high Elder Seal, and you'll have access to all the coatings by the Blast coating. You have a strong defense of 1109 that is strong against ice and water, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. So when it comes to the skills, first of all, you'll have attack boost at level seven. You'll then have agitator at level five, health boost at level three, Ice attack at level 3, this is a byproduct of the armor, it's not needed on this build whatsoever unless we were using an ice weapon. You have critical eye at level 3 which can be potentially level 5, you have crit boost at level 3, you have focus at level 3 which is a byproduct of the armor we're wearing, it's not needed that much on the build but it will allow us to charge up the bow more quickly if we're holding down the fire button. You have critical draw level 3 which increases our affinity by 100% when we perform draw attacks. Now, when it comes to the bow and the dragon piercer build, critical draw is an essential skill as when you draw your bow through pressing and then holding the fire button, that critical draw affinity bonus will be applied to whatever shot we perform after releasing the trigger. So the way you play this build is to hold the fire button down, charge the bow up to its maximum and then immediately you press triangle and circle or Y and B and then go into the dragon piercer attack which will have the critical draw bonus applied to that attack. Afterwards, you'll sheave your weapon, let the Frostcraft set bonus kick in again, rinse and repeat. Anyway, you also have peak performance level 3, which is a byproduct of the armor we're wearing, but it's still useful. Whenever we have full health, it increases our raw attack. You have quick sheave level 3, again, another byproduct of the armor, but allows us to sheave the weapon more quickly, which is great for if you're using this playstyle with the bow. You have coalescence level 3, which is a skill that whenever you move a blight or element from your hunter, you'll gain increased raw attack, elemental damage, and element damage. You'll also have piercing shots at level 2 which increases the damage of the dragon piercer attack. Your special ammo boost at level 2 which is a skill that again increases the damage of the dragon piercer attack as well as the thousand dragons attack. You have resuscitate at level 1 which is a byproduct of the ammo we're wearing but it's still useful in some respects. Whenever you remove a abnormal status from your hunter you'll gain increased dodge capabilities as well as reduced stamina depletion. You also have Bow Charge Plus at level 1, Clutch Claw Boost at level 1, and when you're wearing the Rocksteady Mantle, you have Divine Blessing at level 2, which gives us a chance at taking reduced damage when we take a hit from the monster. Finally, for the set bonuses, you'll have three of them. The first two are attached to the Velcana Divinity. For wearing two pieces of the armor, you'll have the Critical Element set bonus, which we talked about on the previous build. But more importantly, you'll have the Frostcraft skill, which gives this build an additional gauge found underneath our Health and Stamina bar which will grant us increased damage. However, with each attack, this bar will be depleted, reducing that bonus attack. However, should you sheave your weapon, this bar will fill itself back up, granting us that bonus attack again. Thus, the reason why it works so well with the Dragon Piercer playstyle. And then finally, you'll also have the Frostfang Absolute Art, Punishing Draw. This is a skill that adds a stun effect to draw attacks, as well as also slightly increasing the attack power. So there you have it, as you can see it's quite a quirky niche build, I don't think it's the most effective build out there but it's a fun way to play the bow, definitely different from the standard way of playing the bow anyway. Like I said it's all about performing the draw attacks and going directly into the dragon piercer move, rinse and repeat. Should this be used against long monsters like brute wyverns, this can be incredibly effective. 
but unfortunately this build obviously has pros and cons. One of the biggest pros for this build is its strong raw attack damage. Combining attack boost, agitator, peak performance crit draw and more, you're able to dish out a lot of raw attack damage to monsters. On top of that, one of the other pros for this build is it's exceedingly good at taking down long monsters like I said. Monsters who have a lot of hit zones on them allows this build to do lots of burst damage to them so long as you're hitting the right spots. And then finally when it comes to the pros is the Frostcraft set bonus. A unique set bonus that is not only fun but it also adds damage to this build. But of course this build comes with cons. One of the biggest cons for this build is unfortunately it's very poor when it comes to small monsters. If you're taking on Fanged Wyverns or the likes of Rajang, then this build is not going to be effective as they don't have many hit zones for the Dragon Piercer to go through. And unfortunately the other con for this build is unfortunately timing is everything. Even if you're going up against monsters that have a lot of hit zones, if you don't time the Dragon Piercer correctly, then you're going to take a hit or completely miss your shot. But regardless, if you're looking for a different way to play the bow, something that's a little bit more unique, something that's not the norm, then I'd strongly recommend this build, especially if you're going up against long monsters. Which brings us on to the fourth and final build, which is the best of the best Guiding Lands bow build. This is an effective raw attack build that you can take into the Guiding Lands and use it to farm pretty much any monster you come across. When it comes to the bow, it's arguably the best when it comes to using elemental damage. However, elemental builds when used in the Guiding Lands can be frustrating as you constantly have to go back to camp and switch out the bow and charm to match whatever monster you're going up against. When it comes to this build, it means that you can use it against pretty much any monster without having to go back to camp and change constantly. So for this you'll need the Frostfang Helm Beta, the Dragon Hide Alpha, Dragon Claws Beta, the Dragon Barbs Alpha, Dragon Feet Beta and the Challenger Charm 5. I'm also using the Boat of Vice and Violence again, which comes with a Health Regen Augmentation and Attack Increase Augmentation. As for the Specialist Tools, these are down to personal preference, so again I've gone for the Temporal and Rocksteady Mantles. So when it comes to the jewels, we've got a fair few to play around with. So I've gone for Destroy Jewels for the Part Breaker skill, Physique Jewels for the Constitution skill, Mighty Bow Jewel for the Bow Charge Plus skill, a Fortitude Jewel for the Fortify skill, Challenger Jewels for the Agitator skill, Refresh Jewels for the Stamina Surge skill, Expert Jewels for some Critical Eye, a Shaver Jewel for the Clutch Claw Boost skill, Evasion Jewels for Evade Window, Hard Geology Jewels for the Geologist skill, Force Shot Jewels for the Normal Shot skill, Spread Jewels for the Power Shot skills, and a critical jewel for the critical boost skill. As for the jewels on the mantles, I've simply gone for attack jewels for the attack boost skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 200 health and 200 stamina, regardless of if you've taken all your relevant consumables. You'll have a raw attack of 468 with 10% base affinity. This can be potentially 80% when you take into account weakness exploit, as well as the buff from the agitated skill. You'll have a dragon rating of 120 with high elder sill, and you'll have access to all the coatings by the blast coating. You'll also have a decent defense of 1,109 that is strong against water, thunder and ice but unfortunately weak to fire and dragon. As for the skills, you have Critical Eye at level 7, Agitator at level 7, you have Constitution at level 5. Now we've already talked about Constitution and I normally only recommend it going to level 3 but at level 5 it eliminates the need for dash juice so you can save on your dash juice supply if you need to. You can of course replace some of the physique jewels if you want for a different skill if you so desire and then rely on the dash juice to top up the constitution skill. Anyway, you have Evade Window at level 5, Weakness Exploit at level 3, Part Breaker at level 3, which is an essential skill for the Guiding Lands as it allows you to break monster body parts more easily. And this means that you can break off monster materials from the monsters in the Guiding Lands more easily, allowing you to farm more materials overall. You have Stamina Surge at level 3, Geologist at level 3. Geologist is another essential skill for the Guiding Lands, although you really only need it at level 1. However, given the decoration slots we have available on this build, you might as well get it to level 3. Geologist is a skill that allows you to loot the monster materials broken off from them twice instead of once, at least from the high tier monsters. Also, having Geologist at level 3 means that we're able to farm the mining nodes and bone piles extra times. You have normal shots at level 2, power shots at level 2, you have critical boost but only at level 1, still this will increase our overall DPS when we crit a monster. You have fortify level 1 which is a useful skill for the guiding lands, every time you faint and come back you'll come back with increased raw attack and defense, however this buff can only be applied twice to a hunter. You'll also have bow charge plus at level 1, clutch claw boost at level 1 and when you're wearing your mantles you'll have attack boost at level 2. 
You also have various set bonuses, including the Fatalis Legend, Inheritance and Transcendence, as well as the Frostfang Absolute Art Punishing Draw. Although the Punishing Draw isn't really needed on this build, it's more of a byproduct than anything else. So there you have it. As you can see, it's another strong raw attack build, bearing many similarities to the first build featured in this video. But even this comes with pros and cons. When it comes to the pros, its biggest pro is its raw attack damage output. Combining many skills such as Critical Eye, Agitator, Normal Shots, Power Shots and more, it means that we're able to take down monsters quite effectively regardless of their elemental resistances. On top of that, the other pro is this build is very effective at farming the Guiding Lands thanks to having Part Breaker, Geologist and more, meaning that we can take on pretty much any monster, yielding maximum rewards and without having to go back to the camp and change our build all the time. And then finally for the pros is the Fatalis Legend set bonuses, which provides us more DPS, survivability and quality of life for this build. But unfortunately, there are cons. The first con, again much like the first build, is unfortunately your coatings are going to be in limited supply. And the second more annoying con is unfortunately this is again a jewel heavy build, requiring a ton of jewels to make work effectively. Nonetheless, if you're able to get a hold of all the jewels as well as the associated armor, you can craft yourself a very effective bow build to use in the Gaiden Lands that can be effective and efficient against pretty much any monster that you need to farm. So there we have it. Those are the best of the best builds for the bow in Monster Hunter Wood Iceborne. Now the builds are aimed to be strong general builds, able to take on pretty much any task in Monster Hunter World. But if you wanted something more specific, you can always adjust things here and there for if you want to take on stronger monsters like Elatrion or Fatalis. These builds may also slightly differ from other meta builds in the community, but regardless, these are the strongest builds that I personally like to use in the game and I hope they help you out in your hunts as well. So until next time, I've been Dable, bringing you the best of the best builds for the bow in Monster Hunter Wood Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.